And we're back in studio. Hi, Ed. How are you doing this morning? Hey, I'm good, Rich. How good. are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How was your weekend? Uh, well, you know how it is. You know, chores around the house, you know, honeydews and stuff. Always. There's yeah. always honeydews. Yeah. This time of year, we got the weeds growing, so had to hit a few of the weeds in the backyard. Oh, I can't stand picking weeds. Yeah. It's annoying. Yeah. Well, I have an announcement to start out with. Oh, okay. So today is my oldest daughter, Jade's birthday. Wow. So I'd like happy to say, birthday. happy birthday, Jade. Happy birthday, Jade. So they went down to Disneyland yesterday, took the grandkids, so they had a great time. So, but- Disneyland? Disneyland. It's oh, wow. now open. Yeah. Was that, was that crowded? She said it wasn't too, too bad. Mm -hmm. But you, you got to wear the masks and stuff, Yeah, right? you still have to wear a mask, but they had a good time. Mm -hmm. so. Good, good. Kids loved it, huh? Oh, they love it. Yeah, three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter, they had a time of their life. So they, they always liked Disneyland. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So today, back in studio, today the topic is oxygen sensors. So maybe by the time we're done breaking them down, you know, you might know a little bit more about the oxygen sensors today. So I'd like to start out with, obviously, as technology improves over time, so does the design of automotive components that have recyclable value, such as an oxygen sensor. It gets more complicated, yeah, sure. But we'll get into that a little bit later in our discussion. But to start things off, let's just start at the top. What is the purpose of an oxygen sensor? Well, it's, uh, it's so that the onboard computer can um, obtain a data point to trim the, uh, the uh, air-fuel ratio uh, going into the uh, cylinder for combustion. And right. it's, it's um, sensing the downstream combusted gases to uh, check on the uh, oxygen content. So now would that work in co coincide with like the EGR valve? Right. And the catalytic converter? Right, exactly. Yeah, it's all about trimming that uh, air fuel ratio so that uh, the catalytic converter works to its optimum mm -hmm. in in the after uh, treatment of those gases. So the air fuel ratio mixture that it's yeah. that it's flowing. Well, you through know, the nowadays exhaust. you know these these engines are burning hotter with higher uh, compression pressure, right? And uh, they're achieving um, unbelievable uh, high high emission standards. That's the whole point of that. Right. Yeah. So now typically tell us how many oxygen sensors are in a modern vehicle today? Well, you know, back when, when they first came out, there was one in the system. Um, and then the onboard computer became more sophisticated. And uh, then there became more of those ECMs, electronic control modules, uh, for different systems. You know, lighting or air conditioning or right. uh, the fuel system, uh, the emissions system. And uh, so there's probably, I would say, an average of three to four of those sensors in the exhaust system today versus 30 years ago. Yeah, like came OB, out with OBD1 one. vehicles, right? Yeah. There was probably just one sensor per right. vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when did the, the oxygen sensor come about? Do you know well, what year they came, that was? They came out around the, the uh, early 90s. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. And do you have a, uh, an idea of what the average lifespan of an oxygen sensor is? Well, I, I think it really depended upon the, um, the uh, tune-up tune on the car. Um, if, it was, if it was efficient on a burn... It would last longer. Yeah. They're designed to last maybe 50,000 miles, but then they do foul. You know, they get carbon deposits, and, and I know that some people have attempted to clean off those deposits, but it's really hard because you clean off the deposits on the outside of the sensor, but to get on the inside to clean off those deposits was very yeah. difficult. So it was easier just to replace them. Right. Yeah, service technician had told me, you know, a tail sign that an oxygen sensor is fouling or, or bad need to be replaced is a rough idle. And the other thing too, he said, is if you're driving the same distance in your vehicle, but you've noticed that your miles per gallon has significantly, you know, been reduced. Right. He said, that's a tail sign of a foul, a foul oxygen sensor. Right. Exactly. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, they screw in to the, into the pipe or into the converter itself. So, 
It's easy enough to replace it um, if it hasn't been on too long and it hasn't rusted in place. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So now talking about design, let's uh, break down what is the differences in the oxygen sensors? Well, you know, the, um, the fact that automobile manufacturers are always looking t- towards future design and um, cost savings. Vehicle costs keep rising. Commodity prices keep rising. Um, oxygen sensors are essentially um, a ceramic thimble inside with uh, a coating of platinum, a little bit of palladium perhaps, not much. Um, and they used to be coated uh, 100% on the outside of that ceramic thimble and 100% on the inside of that thimble first generation. And then we began to see, oh, five, eight years later, um, they began to thrift the amount of precious metal that they loaded inside it. And so they were able to achieve a cost savings there. And then that just that that just continued all the way down to today and we've seen the size of the ceramic thimble get smaller the diameter to get narrower it still operates in the same manner right so if there's less surface area on the inside where the ceramic thimble is located they could put less platinum on it and then after a while they they determined they didn't even need to coat the whole inside or the whole outside they just coated a strip on the left, a strip on the right, inside, outside. So they were able to achieve about a 60% reduction in the amount of platinum that was was doped or loaded on that ceramic thimble. And then as we see uh, another 10 years down the road, uh, they began to replace those thimbles with a stick, kind of like a popsicle stick, just a mini one. You know, Like a plastic it's, planer? It's, 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 it's a ceramic uh, planer. Mm-hmm. But we call them planers. And then they've just got a little bit on, on the inside, a little bit on the outside. And, and, and it's kind of built like a, an MLCC, which is a, a multi-layer ceramic capacitor. It has multi-layers of ceramic, and there's a little bit of precious metal between the layers. So that's how the sensor operates. And then those sticks, they, they, they were three inches, two inches, now they're an inch and a half long. You know, they were a quarter inch in diameter, now they're, or, or width, now they're a tenth of an inch in width. So they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And even the the um, current generation, which I like to say is about an eighth generation design, um, you know, the sensors were about what six inches. Now they're three and a half inches. Wow! So they're getting smaller and smaller because the engines are getting smaller. I mean, you look at a uh, a three liter engine doesn't need the big oxygen sensor on there. So right, mm-hmm. hybrids. So with technology, with the design, probably the the newer design of the ECM units in the vehicle, they can thrift a lot of the uh, precious metal, so sure. to speak, sure. for the oxygen yeah. sensor. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, incremental changes over years through engineering. Yeah, save them money in manufacturing. Um, what here in the United States? What do we sell? Eighteen million cars a year. Um, if in nineteen um, Say 1995, we're selling nine million cars a year at one sensor. So that's nine million sensors, right? Right. Well, now it's uh, 18 million cars at three sensors. Do or the math, more, right? Or do the math. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they're doing the math, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, so, so as 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 we see them enter into the recycling stream, uh, we're, we're noticing that, uh, of course, it's a mixed stream of all the different generations right. that we're seeing come in for recycling, but we're seeing the recoverable platinum values dropping. Um, it's, it's still economical right. for recycling. Um, it's just that it's diminishing in value. But yeah, it's a funny thing. As it diminishes in value, sometimes the commodity underlying price begins to rise and make up for the difference. That's true. Yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, we haven't seen right. that in platinum yet because platinum's been in the doldrums for the last five years. Yeah. But it might happen in the future. Absolutely. Could, yeah. As new technology comes out and there's more of a need for platinum. Exactly. Platinum pricing will rise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what we're hearing rumblings of out there for alternative uh, uh, drivetrains to eliminate you know, internal combustion engines. Right. Obviously, they're going to need platinum for those. Could could systems. use a significant amount of platinum. 
So with that being said, with the the current design, and and we've gone from the first generation that obviously had a higher recyclable value, right? And the second generation, you know, now we're into this, you know, seventh and eighth generation. You know, is it still wise, obviously, to be recycling oxygen sensors for the wrench turners, for the muffler shops that are out there that that are possibly throwing these oxygen sensors away? Not knowing that there is recyclable. Well, value. Now that's a question I ask you because you you handle a lot of the inbound calls, and um, what are you hearing from these service technicians in the marketplace? That they're doing just that. They don't realize that they have recyclable value. Right. They are just throwing them away, or they'll end up in their scrap bin, and unfortunately, it'll go in with steel scrap. Well, they get a nickel a pound. Okay. Get, and get melted, <laughs> uh-huh. and then we lose. You know. The precious yeah. metals to the furnace. Yeah. Well, if they go in with the steel scrap for recycling, um, the steel gets melted down and the precious metal is lost in the alloy. Right. So the precious metal is not recovered and they're not paid for it. No. No. Yeah. They're they're very surprised when they hear that that is something that has recyclable value and what they could make for this item. Right. You know, obviously it's where bulk makes sense because if you save up enough of them, you're going to get a nice, you know payday at the end well the thing about the um scrap metal recycling industry is it's it's typically a regional industry a couple hundred mile radius of right. setting out trucks for picking up volume um and you need bulk for mm-hmm. uh payment and and the uh, processing so when you when you look at the automotive repair industry um it's all over the country it's even in little towns everywhere right on the byways. And so it's a highly fragmented marketplace in regards to the collection effort Mm -hmm. for those recyclables that you're referring to, such as oxygen sensors. Right. And uh, that becomes a challenge, how to address that and uh, not see those resources uh, get thrown in the trash. I mean, they're throwing them in the trash as well, right? Throwing them in the trash. Yeah, Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, they should be collecting them up and uh, occasionally shipping them out. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you save up 100 pounds, 200 pounds, you know, you could send that in for processing, no problem. That's right. And then we have clients, obviously, that do the larger loads, you know. It would be a Gaylord, you know, 3,800 plus. So it just, it just needs to get out there that, yes, this is an item that they can be saving that has recyclable value. Right. We're able to process it, get that precious metals back out into the automotive marketplace, if you right. will. Well, great. Well, I thought that was very informative. So I appreciate your time today. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah. Okay. Please Thank uh, you, subscribe, like, and share the videos, and we'll see you in the next episode.